Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another journaling on a budget starting from scratch. And today we are going to make some little film strip. Um, one is going to be a flip out and one will be a belly band. So I've just chosen the page already and I've chosen some papers that will fit in my book and cut them to the size of the pages. And then I've already um, cut one of the windows out and the way that I did this because you don't have to have any particular size size so you can um, just make this this was a piece of paper that I had and all I did was fold it in half and rip it in half and thought that's okay I you know I'm good with how wide that is I could have made it skinnier if I wanted to if you want it to look more like a film strip you can make your your edges more these are like a half an inch here and um, you know you could make your edges a half an inch you could even put little black squares along the edge to make it look like where the film rolls through the machine but um, I just I kind of liked the way that this was and so I went ahead and I just measured the back and just drew lines across where I wanted my squares to be and then each edge this way and then I just used my razor knife to cut those out. And I thought, well, I'm gonna do the other side the same way, um, you know, the same size. You don't have to do three, you could do four, you could do two, you could do it however you would like to do. Um, but I thought that it would be kind of cool if they match. And this one we're gonna use as a belly band. And then this one we are going to use as a flip out. So, you know, just to show different ways that we can use them. And so I've also been working on a an edge stamp that is actually drying right now. I mean, we've made stamps before, but, um, you know, I wanted to, you know, take a lot of time. And it did take me a while to get it all figured out and make it. And I haven't tried it yet, so hopefully it looks good. But um, so I've got that one already done and drying. And we'll use that along the corners and then on our page here also. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace around this one so I don't have to do all the measuring again. And because you can use, you know, there are no right measurements, I can tell you this is Okay, it's seven and three quarter inches long and then I made the top piece is um, nine sixteenths, so it's a half plus a mark, and then the the windows are one and three quarter inches. The next one is one two three one two three four five eighths. And again, one and three quarters, five eighths, one and three quarters, and two, three, four, and five eighths. So the top one, I believe, is just one little bit. Yep, the top is a sixteenth of an inch shorter. On the sides, they are one inch on each side, and the squares wide are one and three quarter inches wide. By one, so the squares are actually square, one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So that would be your measurements. Your measurements would be, you would measure them at nine sixteenths, and that's if your thing is seven and three quarter inches long. But I have it here, nine sixteenths, two and five sixteenths. Three, four and three quarters, five and three eighths, seven and one eighth, and seven and a half. Those are the measurements. And then one inch on each side. And the width of the whole thing is three and three quarters. So if you want measurements, there's measurements. But I just kind of, you know, like whenever I have a piece of paper, I just measure it and 
you know, just play with it until I didn't have it right the first couple times, had to erase the lines and adjust it until I got it right, just because I didn't feel like doing the math for it. Um, and so then I have to decide, because I'm going to draw the lines on the side I don't want up, so I have to decide, do I want that side up or do I want this side up? Knowing that it's going to have the three squares in it. I like the darkness of this side. I don't kind of don't like the white, but that's all right. They're going to, well, let's see. I wanted to see one thing. Okay, if I do like that, this one's going to be right to here. How much white? That's going to be an awful lot of white on my band across there. I guess I'll go with this side. That yeah, might be the same. I like this side. All right, so I like this side. This is what I want to be my front. So I'm going to draw my squares on the back. And because these are the same size, I am just going to trace around with my pencil. Just like this. And underneath here, I have a cutting board, which is actually a little bit bumpy for my lines, but that's okay. Um, and it's just any cutting board that you that you have if you have an extra one in your kitchen or even the one in your kitchen. We're going to cut this with our razor knife, but any cutting board will work. And if you don't have a cutting board, you can use cardboard. I use cardboard quite often, but um, sometimes it's just easier to have something that because I don't, ha I'm not going to have to cut this. I'm not going to have to move my cardboard as I'm cutting. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've made those squares, I am going to extend my lines so that I know where to stop because my ruler is going to be sitting on top of the square and I won't be able to see where to start and where to stop. So I'm going to do that going both ways. Okay, so now when I'm trying to cut this line, I know I have to cut from there to there, but if my ruler was sitting on top of it like this, I wouldn't be able to see my square. I could see it from over here, but then I have to kind of judge it. So now I know that I need to start there. I need to start here and stop here. Start here and stop here, just like that all the way down. And I'm going to line up my ruler so that they all wind up straight because I just traced. I didn't use a ruler to trace. And I'm just going to start there and stop. Oops, I went too far on that one. I need to extend this just a little bit. Start there and stop right there. Start right here and stop right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now on this side I can see my lines because of the way I set my ruler. So you could, I could have turned the paper over so that I could see it the same way. But I just like to have my lines extended out there. That's the way I always do it. That way, no matter how I set my ruler down, I know I'm gonna be able to see where I have to cut, whether I put it inside the square where I can't see the square or whether I put it outside the square where I can see the square, if that makes any sense. So we're just going to cut these all out. Oops, I think I missed one. Yep, I didn't cut it right here. That wouldn't work very well. And one more. And then I pulled out my big pages. The bigger pictures that I took out of my flower book. And I've already chosen which pages I want to have. And 
And you can go in and cut this with your scissors if you didn't quite get it. I prefer to use the knife just because I have a little bit more control over it. And I don't bend things up by trying to get my scissors in there. So there we go. Now we have a second one. And this is the side that we're going to have out. So for the first one that's going to be a belly band, I thought this was a really pretty picture. And then, so what I did was, I really liked it up here. I thought that that was nice. Now see, it doesn't fit completely on the back, but that doesn't matter. The only thing it has to do is cover my windows. So I thought this was kind of nice with the yellow and then the purple and then the yellow. But I thought, well, just to be sure, you know, I just kind of adjusted it and, you know, went down here. And if I go down here, then I have purple and yellow and purple. But I thought these were kind of dark. I didn't care for them that much. They don't show up that much. So I'm going to go back up here and just kind of see where I want it to be. You know, I can, I can move it over so long as I have something here to glue to. I can kind of put it wherever I want it. And I kind of like that. Now this edge is sticking out of it. So I'm going to cut a little bit of that off. Not too much. I just don't want it to stick out, but I do want to make sure I have enough to glue. And then put that back on there. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. Or do I want, I think I'm gonna move it down a little bit so this, this pansy here shows, cause it's got the little face on it where the others are all turned, kind of turned around. So that is good right there. I need to take a touch off the top because the top was sticking out and then I'm gonna cut this one just inside. About there, take a little sliver off the top. And then this one right here could be used for a tag or something, so don't throw it away. And then I'm gonna put that one on there just like that. Okay, so I'm going to put glue around the edges of my window instead of on here because this this way you'll know exactly where you need it. Now, don't get too much. I want to be close, but you don't want it to squish out. So we're going to do this and then we're going to just smooth it out a little bit after we get all the glue on. so that it doesn't squish out at all. Smooth this out of the way. And I'm kind of rubbing it, oops, towards the middle so that I know that I've got glue all the way on those. I want these edges of the paper to be completely glued. I don't want them to be loose. Now, my our other paper might be a little bit bigger, and that's fine. When this is dry, then we can go in and add a little bit of glue around the outside edges of our flowers if we want to. But what we're actually going to do too is, let's see, we want to make sure that we have this little face right here. Make sure that we've got everything covered. I'm going to put this here so that I can not get glue on here um as i was saying we're going to put a piece on the back of this just a piece of coffee dyed paper a piece of our of our shorthand paper um that we can just use it because it's paper a piece that we wouldn't want to use for something else um just so that we have a nice solid back in that way um so that we have a nice thing to tuck into. So we don't really have to worry about um, gluing down these edges because I'm gonna put a piece of paper on the back of there to make this solid. But there we go, that looks really good. 
And then if we wanted, we could put a little pink around the edges. I don't really think we need to do that. I kind of like it just the way that it is. So there's one. And then the next one, I didn't have another one that I liked. I mean, I could have used the other half of that page, but I, you know, I just didn't, I couldn't find a spot that I liked real well. But I thought I found these and I thought, oh, those are really pretty. I really like those little roses. Obviously, they're not big enough. And then I found this one and I thought it was kind of cute with the flowers on the table. And I thought, well, why don't we put this one in the middle? We'll cut this one in half, put one at the top and one at the bottom. So we're just going to go in, cut this one right here. Make sure that it's not sticking above this window. See where we've got it. And I think I like it right about there. So I'm going to need to trim this just inside here and right here in the middle of this one. And these don't have to be perfect because they're on the back. And again, this one is going to get a piece of tea dyed paper on the back because it will be a writing space. I'm just going to trim this down just a touch. I don't have any idea why. Alrighty, so this one is going to go in here just like that. And I'm going to just do that right now. Now I still got glue all over my table. Can you see? I'm trying to get out of the way. I had a damp rag here earlier. I do that all the time. I have them. Then I'm working on samples or something. I use them, throw them away, and then I don't have one when I need it. Okay, so we're going to get that all the way around. We're just going to kind of line it up where we want it. Oops, I just flipped this the other way around. Okay, I like that, but I'm going to straighten this out. There. I like that. And then I'm just going to take this one. That looks pretty. Cut it right about here. And we're going to put this one up here. No, nope, it goes this way. I thought I had it upside down. Just put that one there. that one there yeah that works so back to the glue already once once I get these pictures put in um, then what I'm gonna do is I will put a backing on them and put them in a book to dry just put a Walmart bag in there, bef you know, on each side so that they don't stick to your book. But we definitely want them to dry nice and flat. And so I'll do that and I will check my... What did I just do with my other... There it is. Um, I'll check my stamp and see if it's dry yet. These leaves are going that way, so this has to be the right side up. And I like that, but it's a little bit tall. So I'm going to just trim a little bit of that off. There we go. So I'll let these dry, and then I'll come back. And we'll do the stamping on the pages. And then hopefully these will be dry by the time that we get done stamping.
Oh, well, of course, all I had to do was look at the words on the back. That would have told me what the top of the picture was. See, there's a benefit to cutting things out of a book or a magazine. There we go. I like the looks of that one. And that one is going to be a flip out with a writing space on the back side. So I'm going to go, first I'll put the backing paper on these so that they can dry all at once. And um, then I will grab the stamp and be back and we'll see about stamping the pages. Back in a minute. Okay, I am back and our little frames are dry. And so this is our belly band. So I just put that on a piece of scrap um, paper. I left just a touch at the top and the bottom because I'm not sure if they were long enough for our pages or not. So um, I thought that would just make it, um, in case they weren't long enough, I would have enough to go all the way to the top and bottom. The other one has writing space because that's going to be our flip out. This one is going to be the belly band. So it'll be glued at the top and bottom so it won't matter what's on the back. So those are all ready. Now our flip out is going to need to be taped on. It could be put on with fab a fabric hinge or, but I'm going to do it with um, washi tape hinge. So I do have a piece of our tape on this plastic bag. This is medical tape that we bought for this series. And um, so first I want to get kind of a background color on there. So I'm going to use, because of the colors in our flowers and the colors in our um, background papers, I'm going to use red, orange, and yellow. And all I'm going to do is just, because this is a plastic Walmart bag here, I'm just going to come out here a little bit and put a little bit of color. I shouldn't have really probably done one so solid, but we'll do some orange. Make sure it's as long as my tape so I can cover my tape. And then also let's get some yellow in there. Like that. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to give it a bit of spray. Really didn't need that much water. That's really going to water it down quite a bit. I'm just going to tap a piece of plastic on top of it. Yep, that was way too much water, but we'll see what we can get with it. So I'm going to just put our tape on there and then pick it up. We've got a little bit here on the tape, so I want some more here. I'm just going to put that right up to there. Make sure that it gets something. Okay, and I still need some more here, so I'm going to just keep putting it on there till I get as much color as I want. I've got a lot of color here and not much over here, so I'm going to just bring that over there. And it doesn't have to be solid, so I think that I'm going to just do this. and call that done. So now I'm going to I'm going to grab a piece of paper. I guess I can just use this paper right here. And I'm going to suck up whatever colors left on the plastic. It's also pulling it off the tape, hopefully not all of it. And it pulled an awful lot out of the tape. <laughs> it's got a little tape mark right down there. Let's see what our tape looks like. I think that that has enough color. Now let's put some squares because we cut squares here. So I thought our square stamp would be a great stamp to use. So let's just go ahead. Maybe do like every other one. Do red and orange since the yellow would probably be really light. Okay, breathe on them. And stamp it right on there. There we go. Now, thing is, our blues and purples are coming off from behind, but that's all right. 
makes them show up even more. I'm just going to do it again until we get down to the end. But, and when you make these stamps, you can make them any size that you want to. And there we go. Now, the further we get, the more the regular color is showing up. And probably one more time we'll do it. But don't forget when you store these stamps, store them someplace where they're not going to get something um, stuck on them. You know, like, um, how do I want to say that? So something doesn't push into them, something with sharp edges or anything. Because if these get dense in them, those dents will stay there. Just like when you're making your own stamps you know you can dent them by drawing on them with a pen so you just want to make sure when you store them I store it in a box make sure it's flat if I put any others in there I make sure that they're flat on top of each other so that the like the corner of the cardboard of the next one is not pressing into one of my squares so and take your time when you're making your stamps um, because they're going to last you forever so, you know, those little squares, I actually measured them. You can do little organic ones that are, you know, really quick and easy. But if you want a detailed one, um, you just want to make sure that... Okay, this is going to go... You want to just make sure that you take your time and get what you want. So this is going to go on the edge of there to tape it on. So that's good. I like that. We're going to set these aside for now, though, because now I'm going to show you the... Um, edge stamp that I made and this is a background stamp and an edge stamp so what I did was um, again this is one where I measured I don't know if you can see pencil marks in the background very lightly so that I didn't dent my fun foam but I, I drew measurements and lines and then I decided what I wanted then I used my pen and went really hard in the areas that I wanted and then on the top of each of these there's a little circle and that is from a regular um, clicker pen you click the um, the writing spot up inside so that it's just got that hole in it and then I just press that there. Then what I did was I used my razor knife and I cut with my ruler because I did this one with a ruler to make sure my lines were straight. Again you can do it very organically but um, and I just cut on every one of those lines being very careful to try and start and stop right where my lines start and stop so that I don't have an extra an extra mark in my fun foam. So I just went ahead, just cut it, and then turn it over, and where your point comes together, just make sure that you have that cut through. Just like that, okay. So now I went from having a background stamp to having two edge stamps. Now. I can put these back together, put a piece of tape on the back to hold them together, and use it as just one single stamp. Or I can take them apart and use them as edge stamps like this. So that is, now I want to test this, my ink. If you use a pen that's run out of ink, it's hard to see what you're doing, but it doesn't leave ink on your, on your stamp this ink may come off and so it's going to get on my page that's okay because it just gives it to me a little extra interest until it eventually wears off it does eventually but if you have a pen that's run out of ink do all of this marking with that pen you can see it and um you know i i do it this way so that you can see what i've done because like i said you know the little circles that i put on there you can't see them but they're there see right there and so if your whole thing looks like that, where you have the marks, but without any color, then it won't come off on your page. Now, I wanna see 
what this looks like because I'm thinking maybe I don't want it super dark on the edges of my page. I want it maybe a little lighter. So what I'm thinking is if I color it and then just spritz it with a little bit of water, what will it look like? And so I'm just going to again use these three colors using the edge of your marker. Um, helps you go just a touch faster. It gives you a little more space, a little more surface space touching your stamp to give you a little more color. And yeah, see that? I can already see right there the pen blending into my yellow. But it does eventually wear off. and then put some orange on here and then we're gonna see what it looks like I wasn't able to test this before I came on here so hopefully it looks halfway decent and I'm hoping that the water works to just tone it back just a little bit maybe I should after I spritz it with water maybe I should put the plastic on it I didn't want it as light as it usually gets with the plastic, so I didn't want to put put it on the plastic and try and, I don't think I'd get enough on it. I don't think I'd get enough coverage on my stamp itself. All right, so let's move this. I'm gonna grab the plastic. I'm gonna try not to spritz it quite as heavy as I did the plastic because I get carried away. So let's just give a mist and a mist. Let's just, oh, do I try it or not? Okay, let's just try it with just misted. And let's see what it looks like. I should have actually tried to line it up on the edges. And there we go. So that works pretty good. It's still pretty bright. The way it looks I think so I'm gonna try and do it on this other side too just to stamp off what I've got on there just making sure I get pressure everywhere there we go okay so that's gonna work I want to put that on the edge of the pages these are our two pages, right? Yes. All right, so this is the one with the belly band. So let me grab the belly band. That's this one. So if I put this on here, what are we gonna see? If I were to stamp it this way, we would see that. If I were to stamp it this way, we would see that. Which one do I like better? I think I like this better. So that's what we're going to do. And I don't have to get all the way to the top of the stamp because it's going to be under that belly band. So just get some on here. And when you use your markers like this and they get cross contaminated, because this one is now, um, just make sure that before you put them away, just find a spot where you can just color that off until it turns back to your normal color. 
and try and do it you know somewhere where you'll be able to possibly use that that paper later so that you're not wasting that color That can be used for some kind of backing or some kind of collage or something like that. Andy, where's my red one? Here. This is going to go on our page here because I don't want it to soak, you know, to get on the other page if it soaks through. Let's see if it soaked through or not when we did it. It did soak through a little bit where the water was really heavy. So I'm going to spray it over here lightly. Try and do it lightly. trying to spray like across it like that that's why you heard me spray so many times okay let's see this goes in here this is our page right here and this is the way we wanted it right yes line it up on the edge once it touches don't move it even if you're not lined up straight just leave it and deal with it later because if you move it it's going to smear all over the place okay so there we go And that's what we have. Then our belly band is going to go right there. And that's going to be our edging. I like the way that looks. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do this side also. And um, then for the page with the flip out, our flip out is going to be here. And so I thought what I would do is I thought that I would do this. I was thinking about doing it like this. But actually, if I do it just like this, it gives you more room to write. So I think I'm going to just do that. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here, and then I will be back. Okay, so I have it all done. And um, so we have the stamps that we made today, edge stamps. You can use it as a background stamp. You can use it on both sides of your pages. So this is a fun way to make stamps. And if you have ink pads or if you have paint, you know, you can put paint on a piece of plastic and, you know, spread it nice and thin or on a, um, I use a, a sponge type thing um, to make a paint pad out of just like an ink pad so you can use them with those for this series because I can only use what I purchased for this series the only thing that I have is I do have some paints and then I have the markers for color um, and some paints but I'm getting a little low on those so I decided to use the markers on this now by using the markers I did wind up when I stamped this side it, I did use too much water, but then what I did was I just used my markers and I just went in and traced around the pattern of the stamp itself. And then there was a little bit of color still on the stamp, so I just rubbed it across the page here just to give the page a little interest instead of being plain. And then I used our tape to tape our flip out on. Now this, because I got this so wet, it soaked quite a bit through the other side. And um, then our washi tape is folded over. So actually that winds up giving me an actual start for this next page over here. And um, so our belly band I glued on and that's taped on both or stamped on both sides so that we've got that there. So that is what we have for today. And I hope you enjoyed the process of learning how to make, you know, like the film strips and and making your own edge stamps and that type of thing. And then here's even the paper that, you know, that we used with our with our tape and the original stamp to see how it looked and our rubbing that off. And so that's even another page that could be used in our book. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed today's process. And if you tried, I hope you have a good time. Thanks again. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.